G'day, and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. Yeah, there's way too much sun on my bacteria drum. It's like 50 degrees plus in here. <sighs> Ooh, it smells really bad. I was looking at it a few days ago, and it was smelling really bad. And I got a bit on my hands. My hands stunk for three days. It was disgusting. So let's have a look here. So, uh, this is our chicken shit, see? Oh, it looks ghastly. And it smells really bad too. It smells like a dead rat. And that's because all the anaerobic bacteria inside here, they died. Either they got too hot, it's because it's been in the sun, or, um, or something. Do not water it on your plants. Look what happens when you water on your spinach. Spinach died. So use your nose. It's very important to use your nose. So it smells bad, it is bad. The plants, I think, feel the same way about it. So I'm gonna take this and put it on my compost. And I know I got a lot of it, but it doesn't matter because as soon as these anaerobic bacteria, these dead ones, come in over there on my compost, this time I'm gonna keep the plastic off and I'm gonna turn it. So I'm gonna make an aerobic environment and that'll sort things out totally. It's been a while since I made my first video about soil bacteria and I've learned a lot about them since then. So in this video, I'm going to try and share all the things that I've found out about them. So what I've done, you see how I made myself a little drawing thing. So if we go in here, you see it starts off with these ones here, the lactobacillus bacteria. These microscopic little guys are actually the keystone to life on Earth. So, they live on the surface of the rice grains here. There's millions and millions and millions of them. But we want to catch them. So get yourself a jar or a bucket and fill it up with clean water and pop your rice in there and give them a good wash make sure the water's clean if you live in the city and you've got town water it might have chlorine in it but that's okay because chlorine is a gas so fill up your bucket Leave it for 24 hours and it'll evaporate. And it'll be good to go. And give it a stir. So strain off the rice, keep that milky water. One litre is enough. And half a kilo of rice is also enough. So there you got your starchy water. And inside there you got all sorts of bacteria. Mostly our lactobacillus bacteria. Put a cover on it to keep the bugs out. The first day it should not smell of anything. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower.
So, how do we separate the good ones from the bad ones? It's very simple. It's easy. See, the lactobacillus bacteria, they eat the lactose and then they secrete lactic acid, right? And the lactic acid, that will kill everything else that poops in your brew. It's got to be full cream and it's got to come from a cow. Let it breathe so no bugs can get in. See? Remember, the lactic acid will kill all the other bacteria. And then you're left with only the lactobacillus bacteria. So, after it had been sitting there for a couple of days, just keep your eye on it. You'll see that it separates. Check this out. Take it away, Wayne. If you've got a little tap on the side, you can take it away. Or you can use a spoon to scoop out the curd. Then you can use your cloth to strain the rest. So in the first video, I suggested to make 100 litres. It's way too much. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Learning by doing. But 10 litres is plenty for my garden. If you use molasses with sulphur in it, it will kill your plants. Trust me, I learned the hard way, I did it myself. See, feed grade molasses, it often has preservatives, fungal inhibitors and even antibiotics and extra sulphur. That's going to kill all the bacteria and the fungus. You can use brown sugar or raw sugar. Molasses, it has lots of minerals, so using it is the best. But you can also use brown sugar or raw sugar. It's very important to keep everything clean. So if you put one part whey, one part molasses, and 40 parts clean water into your drum, which is 250 mils of each of those ones. You can use this stuff now, don't use too much though, 100 mils in a watering can is good. So 
So you're putting all your banana or your seaweed or your chicken poo, your cow poo, your pigeon poo, your comfrey, your seaweed, or whatever you want. You mix that in. Use one or the other, about 20%. Cover it up with a, a nice lid, but not, not too airtight. Got to let it breathe. Let it sit in a cool, dark place for about seven days. It's really good to blend stuff up. Gives it more surface area. Bacteria that love banana smoothies. Full of potassium and phosphorus. use chicken poo. I like to have the pellets because they don't smell so much. Give them a mix and let the bacteria go to work. Keep the cloth on to keep the bugs out. When you put all your brew in the bottle, it'll start to ferment, so there'll be coming some gas. So if you put a lid on it and make a hole in the lid, then put a little hose in the hole, then the gas has a place to come out. And the longer you leave it set, the better it becomes. So leave it for a couple of months. You can start to use it after day seven, but the longer you let it sit, the better it becomes. You can use all sorts of things. Whatever you want. So after a couple of months, just strain all the organic material from your brew so it becomes nice and clean. And just put the lid on it, keep it in a nice cool dark place. So heat, light and sun and bugs and time are all your enemies because it'll make it ferment, it might turn to alcohol and the heat, he just doesn't like it. This is a brew that I made and I put it under a light in a hot room for a week. There's a war going on. A war going on between the aerobic environment and the anaerobic environment. So keep it cool and dark guys. do it again and again and again by using your mother brew that's in the fridge. So there is a difference between a compost tea and what we're doing here, you see. Ours is anaerobic and a compost tea is aerobic because you're pumping air through it. 
two different sorts of bacteria both living in their own environment in opposite environments. But they're both good. They're both needed in the garden. And you can use both of them on your compost. I just want to show you a bacteria drum that's um, from my friend's place, my mate Ben. And look at this one. It smells really nice and sweet and uh, looks really nice and white. And if it looks like that, you can use it. Now that's a fungal bloom. So there's the fungus on top, which has gone to flower. And all these little bubbles, that's basically just the gas, the gas coming out of yep. the fermentation. And so this brew in here, this is actually uh, the first generation, what we could call the whey. So if you don't put the whey in the barrel with the molasses, you can actually just store it as well. And um, he's got like a 20 litre bucket of it here. Looking very nice and healthy, smells nice and sweet. As long as it's kept in a nice cool place out of the direct sun should last for about a year old this one still smelling really nice and this is its mum and that's the mother and so that's made from that. that is made from that it's been sitting in the sun and it's just killed the bacteria and maybe too much light in the, in the white buckets i'm not sure but it's um it's definitely important to to use your nose if your nose smells bad stuff then it's bad um, i think it's really important now that i know to keep it uh, in a cool place in the shade okay it's important do not use this if it smells bad it's very important don't use it if it smells bad if your nose doesn't like it your plants won't like it either so I'm going to go and put this on my compost pile now. So remember, this brew is easy to copy and copy and copy and copy. So share it to your friends. Spread the bacteria everywhere. Make everybody's garden happy. But keep it out of the sun and keep it cool. So, making sure we remember it all. Keep it out of the direct sun. Keep it in the dark, which is obvious if it's not in the sun, but even darker. Trust your nose, the nose knows, and keep cool, stay cool, and be cool. Oh, and when you use it, just use it to 100 to 1, okay? That's about 100 millilitres in your watering can. So it's really important not to let your bacteria drum stand in the sun. Find a nice shady spot under a tree so it doesn't get hot because the heat will kill the bacteria. And when the bacteria die, 
it's like a little animal dying and there's trillions of them so if you take all the cells in here all the bacteria cells and put them all together it's probably the size of a a big cat or a huge rat so no sun hey it's okay to make mistakes as long as you learn from them and move on it's all part of the learning curve hope you enjoyed the video i definitely hope you learned something remember to go and check out my patreon page got a lot of behind the scenes videos and a bunch of other videos that i don't put on youtube from the garden so go check out patreon and if you're a subscriber please remember to check the notification button so you get a little notification when i put up a new video have a nice day and i'll catch you later